Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What a very good journey it was getting here, actually. London to Cambridge in literally 45 minutes. So I should do this far more often than I do. So what I was going to do is take you through a little bit about my journey. Um, clearly, I think most of you are familiar with what I do in Dragon's Den, which is investing in dog treadmills, bed sheets with black lines down the middle, and, and some of those amazing inventions that have clearly made me a fortune. Uh, but my real background in terms of my kind of business background is I launched a business called Alexander Mann, which was a kind of a headhunting firm where I suppose like a lot of entrepreneurs, I had this crazy idea that I could do headhunting better than somebody else. And one of the things that you'll kind of notice in my background that, that's quite consistent is I'm not an inventor. You know, my kind of strength is I think that entrepreneurship sometimes can be done more effectively by looking at things that already exist, but maybe sometimes you can do it quicker, faster, better, cheaper. And I've seen so many businesses that have done incredibly well where the idea already existed. So even if you take somebody like, you know, Stelios at EasyJet, what did he really invent? You know, the plane already existed, the concept was there, but he just invented something that just did it quicker, <coughs> cheaper, faster. So you'll notice through my background that there's a real theme that goes through where I don't actually invent anything, but what I look at is what already exists and find ways of making them, you know, slightly different. And Alexander Mann, for me, was a concept where I brought the concept of headhunting to the masses. And when I launched that business in mid-1985, the, the market was really in three segments. You had High Street, sort of the Alfred Marks and, and Brook Streets. You had the Michael Pages and the Robert Walters, and then you had the headhunters. And it was a very defined market. And essentially, my model was to, to take that top end and bring it to the masses because at the middle end, the market was 10 times the size. And essentially, came up with an idea, launched a brand, called it Hamilton Bradshaw, not Hamilton Bradshaw, Alexander Mann, and literally <coughs> took a serviced office, um, you know, in Pound Mall. It was a broom cupboard. Uh, it was all I could afford at the time. And it literally was really funny. As I walked in, I hit the desk, uh, and that's how big the room was. So chair on this side chair on this side, desk with the yellow pages, which was really the launch of Alexander Mann, and, and essentially grew that business to about 130 million in fee income um, over a 10-year period. Uh, and the key for me during that journey was, was really recognizing and understanding that a lot of entrepreneurs get extremely focused on their product or their service. Uh, essentially, my biggest lesson in building that business, that actually business is about people it is people who execute and deliver business, not products or services. You can have the best service in the world, you can have the best product in the world, but if you haven't got people to execute, the business never goes anywhere. And, and that was really my kind of key lesson through Alexander Mann. Having built Alexander Mann, just like any other entrepreneur, my vision was, um, you know, could I become an international business? Could I scale? Could I grow? Could I take the business abroad? and essentially launched a new brand called the Humana International Business. And Humana essentially was my foray um, into the overseas market. Over a seven-year period, uh, we took Humana International to 147 offices in 30 countries uh, and then successfully sold the business to a New York-listed company. Um, my essentially career changed quite a bit, having sold Alexander Mann and the Humana International Group. Um, I somehow fell into television. Um, God knows how that happened. Literally just got a phone call out of the blue. Uh, the BBC were thinking of adding a bit of spice to Dragon's Den. They had Richard Farley with a very nice quiff and, and very Australian type of haircut uh, and said, would I be interested in coming on to, to the show? Um, and and the, the crazy thing is, I thought it would be a piece of cake. I thought it'd be quite easy. I, I do this for a living. I invest in businesses uh, and thought it'd be a lot of fun. And I just sold the company, so I was in that perfect time in my life where I was, you know, enjoying a little bit of a gap and said it would be fun to do. Uh, so I went along and, and, and met uh, Deborah Meaden, and then I thought, maybe not. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh my God. And um, anyway, so I met the rest of the, the crowd and, and met Theo, etc. And literally on the first day of rehearsals, it was such fun. I mean, just meeting some of those wacky entrepreneurs and, and 
you know, there was a the period during the day, I'm not exaggerating, I was literally on the floor, I had a stomachache. I mean, some of the ideas that people came up with uh, and valuations that I thought, if only people valued my businesses with those multiples. Um, so I, I, you know, I decided that I'll have a go. Uh, but the interesting story was, it wasn't actually as easy because when you watch it on TV, you know, we're very good armchair critics. We, we're very good at spending other people's money. And when you realise that actually you're sitting in the den, I mean, it really is your money. It's your kind of 100,000 or 200,000 pounds. And when you imagine, you, you know, you're presented with somebody that you've never seen before, an idea you've never had, um, and within 20 minutes you're about to make a decision to part with your 100,000 pounds, it wasn't that easy. And literally, I, I, I literally spent an entire week uh, couldn't do a deal because I think you can't be serious you can't you can't part with that kind of money anyway the whole week went by and on the Friday my wife said to me you know so darling how's it going I said actually not as good as I thought she said don't tell me you haven't done a deal I said actually no I said I've sat there the whole week not one deal she said sweetheart what will the neighbors say this is national television <laughs> That was all she was worried about. What would people say? Uh, I said, no, but the problem is, I, you know, literally in 20 minutes, I can't just hand out that cash. Uh, she said, darling, whatever you do, please, just for the sake of the family reputation, just do a few deals in there. Even if there are a few, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so as we're driving up to Pinewood Studios Friday morning, that journey of kind of 50 minutes, I have a very clear plan. I have a real strategy. I am going to make an investment. Uh, and, and it was quite sophisticated, and the answer was really simple. Uh, first person who walked in on Friday morning, I was going to say, I'm in. And, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, that was the dog treadmill. That, that. <laughs> that, that's how I invested in that. Um, and so essentially, while I was at, um, doing that, I, I decided to, to essentially set up my own private equity business because I'd sold a couple of businesses, had some capital. And the key thing for me... Uh, was that, that my original plan actually was never to set up a private equity firm. The idea was I'd sold these companies, realised some capital, and I was being courted by Goldman's and Merrill's and, and all big banks saying, look, give us the money, we'll invest it. And I thought, actually, no, I'd like to invest in private equity because I understand the principle of business, and, and if, if they're going to invest in businesses, um, I should give my capital to them. Uh, I went through the web and, and found 20 private equity firms, went through the BVCA and, and various organisations, and literally wrote to them and said, I'm a high net worth individual, I'd like to give you some money. So of course, as you can imagine, red carpet, nice treatment. So I, I go to these firms and, and I get the dog and pony show, you know, IRR and returns and pie charts and graphs and very sophisticated information. But the one thing that I found that, that did bug me a bit was kind of everybody I met, I think I did 17 meetings, um, they were either lawyers, accountants, or bankers, and I love them all. I think they're amazing. But the one person I didn't meet in those 17 presentations was somebody who'd built a business before. So I kind of left feeling a bit confused, as if to say, if I'm going to hand over my capital, I think the least that you should have been able to have done was to run a business before. Because having spent 17 years building businesses, the one thing that I was extremely clear about was in business, if anything can go wrong, it generally does go wrong. And I'm not sure the answer always exists in a textbook or theory. I think sometimes you need to have gone through that valley of hard knocks and understand how to deal with those challenges. And I think the marketplace in, in the kind of mid-2000s, a lot of private equity firms did really well, not because I necessarily believe that they were amazing, but the marketplace had grown beyond anyone's imagination. So I thought, if I'm about to hand over, as Theo would say, my children's inheritance, I needed to feel sure that, that these people knew what they were doing. And that was really the, the, the thought that triggered, maybe I should do this myself. Uh, maybe I should set up a private equity firm. Uh, so I came up with a name, Hamilton Bradshaw. And essentially, my model was very different to the way the private equity industry worked because I'd built a number of businesses before. So my concept was to, to kind of if I'm going to invest my own capital, if I'm going to, to risk that capital, the key issue for me is I need to make sure that I pick businesses where I can add value. Because otherwise, what is the point? Because ultimately, money is a commodity. And you know those people can get that commodity from lots of different places. And also, I have a choice. I can invest it in lots of places. So what I was interested in was finding kind of SMEs that had growth potential. 
uh, which is really what I did, and, and recruited a team of 30 business professionals. So people, you know, very good at IT, very good at HR, very good at sales and marketing, very good at finance, very good at cash flow, and basically took my experience of the last 20 years and thought, if I had a magic wand and I could have had each of those professionals with me along the journey, which I would never have had because I could never afford it them, but what impact could that have had on the business? And that was really the HB model. And since starting that, we've invested in about 30 different businesses and have had quite a lot of success, probably more than I would have expected. And, and the key has been fundamentally that principle that to be able to go into a business and bring that level of expertise that typically entrepreneurs may not have because the business is probably too small at that stage to hire that kind of quality of person. So Hamilton Bradshaw today, about 30 different businesses. Um, our sort of claim to fame within that kind of portfolio um, is a business that I launched, which was Hamilton Bradshaw Human Capital. And this is really, um, I, I met uh, investment director, which we took on, a chap called Tristan Ramis. Uh, and Tristan said, why are you not investing in, in this space that you clearly know and understand, which was the recruitment space? Uh, because at the time, I was primarily investing in leisure, healthcare, health clubs, nursing uh, So homes. we launched HBHC. And literally, within a space of four years, we've grown that now. Uh, it's made the top 50 in the world. Revenue is just under 400 million, 14 different brands, 14 different businesses. Uh, but we cover the entire spectrum from healthcare to sectoral legal, finance, accounting. We have a business called Matrix that manages 200 million pounds spend for local government. So have built quite a sizable um, activity in something that I already knew but probably should have done much earlier on, if I, if I kind of looked back. Um, what I thought would be useful, actually, is just to kind of look at the marketplace that I suppose you and I are both in, which is really the SME space. And what I think is quite staggering is, is just what the SME represents to the UK economy. Uh, yesterday, no, Monday, I was at, um, in fact, Microsoft's offices where David Cameron just launched Start Britain. And it just, it was quite phenomenal to see David Cameron, uh, George Osborne and Vince Cable, all three of them at one event promoting entrepreneurship. And I think right now, we, I think we are in an incredible place where entrepreneurship and business is the key phrase of the day. The government, I've never seen them as supportive, as determined to support business and create entrepreneurship. So, I think this is quite a fun place to be in. I think that it's a hive of activity. There are lots of opportunities. You know, yes, it, nothing in business is easy. Attracting good people, not easy. Raising capital, not easy. You know, find good businesses to back, not easy. But actually, I think if you do have a good business, you do have a good product, I do believe you can raise capital because, you know, we're seeing businesses time and time again. The good businesses do find capital. But, you know, quite an interesting place, I think, that we all live in. What I want to do is take two minutes just to kind of share with you one of the businesses that we've recently launched, which is really kind of developing from the Hamilton Bradshaw model, where essentially what I've learned over the last five years is there is a window of opportunity. In the UK, this whole kind of SME space, I think, has a huge amount of potential, which is quite untapped. And one of the things that I wanted to do through Hamilton Bradshaw Venture Partners was to create a service to the SME community that if had existed when I was growing my business, I think I could have done it in half the time, which is really to provide that expertise where entrepreneurs who've started a business, who want to scale a business, can essentially come to Hamilton Bradshaw without having to sell their business too early, without allowing the venture capitalist to get 10 times his return. Because generally what happens is, and I was no different, when I sold Alexander Mann, we were doing about 130 million, I sold 40% of the company to a private equity firm who then went on and sold it. Um, it was turning over 400 million a year. And essentially, they were able to unlock some of that potential <coughs> that, to be blunt, I couldn't do. I didn't have the expertise and the experience of scaling and, and internationalizing at that time in, in what I was doing. So Hamilton Bradshaw Venture Partners essentially is a business very much designed to provide those support and services to the SME entrepreneurial market